Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. The Ministry of Education is working assiduously to address suspected cases of poor air quality at the Bokaj and Sir Iris Simmons Secondary Schools. The National Enrichment and Learning Units begin to roll out the Skills for Youth Employment Project. Medical practitioners build capacity under the HOTS initiative. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports, and the NTN Nouvelle or Koyon. The Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development has been alerted to further suspected cases of poor air quality and mold infestation at schools in the Castries Basin following comprehensive remedial works undertaken at the Antropos Secondary School some two weeks ago. In response to the fresh concerns, the Ministry has undertaken significant work including deep cleaning, mold remediation and pre- and post-air quality testing at the various schools. For instance, the Ministry has entered a second week of assessments and remedial works at the Bokaj and Sir Iris Simmons Secondary Schools. On Friday, November 1, the Ministry reported that officials visited the Bokaj Secondary School where air quality issues were discovered. However, Chief Education Officer Fiona Meyer notes that it is not a case of mold infestation. In the interest of the Ministry of Education that is proactive about looking at the various issues presented, we have nonetheless gotten a contractor to look at the roofing in which there were some leaks and the air quality issues and work is to be commenced today. So the Bocage Secondary School has been looked at immediately by the Ministry of Education and we are pleased that the team has been able to support in that regard. Ministry officials also visited the Sir Iris Simmons Secondary School on Wednesday, October 13. We met with the leadership team of the school, including the district education officer, the DPS, our members of the planning unit, as well as the building officers. An assessment followed soon thereafter on the following day. And contractors were sent in we have noted that there's been mold in, on one of the desks in the staff room, but likewise, we have moved with urgency and a team is being put together today to look at the various issues on the weekend. We can promise, we can speak to the fact that we are taking those issues very seriously. There is a process of grievance but we are appreciative that when there are health issues that may impact an individual or groupings, we will deal with it as a matter of urgency. The ministry has been working assiduously to address the situation. However, students attending the Bocage, Antropo and Sir Iris Simmons Secondary Schools were dismissed early on Monday, 4th November due to inadequate teacher supervision. The Chief Ex Education Officer assures that the education of the nation's children remains a top priority for the Ministry and every effort is being made to minimize loss of instructional time. And speaking of instructional time, more than 1,000 young persons are to benefit from the Skills for Youth Employment Project, referred to as the SKY Project. SKY is a four-year program funded by the UK Government to the value of £9.1 million it is designed to promote economic growth and sustainable development in St. Lucia and the OECS states of Dominica, St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Grenada. The National Enrichment and Learning Unit is now conducting workshops and orientation for successful candidates. The National Enrichment and Learning Unit, NELU, is responsible for the execution and management of the SKY project, which is being funded by the UK government. The SKY project specifically targets disadvantaged youth, including those with disabilities between the ages of 15 and 30. This project is aligned with the national, regional and international agendas on continued education and training. Country coordinator for Sky Lindell Archibald indicated that the project is being conducted throughout the Windward Islands with local support. Four years we are expected in those four islands to provide training for over 6,000 young persons. Training that would help change their lives. Training that would get them certified and skilled and to become employed. You are some of the fortunate ones here in St. Lucia. And as Mrs. Modest said, we'll be going around to three other centers to host orientations of this nature. 
Nellu is expected to train 1,150 young persons between the ages of 15 and 30 years in the next three years. We have other training providers in St. Lucia that will be doing similar training. Trainers include the Center for Adolescent Renewal and Education, CARE, National Skills Development Center, NSDC, and Springboard Consulting. Archibald indicating that the program spans a period of 10 months urged the trainees to commit fully to the training barring all challenges they may confront. Nellu under the program will train 1,150 young persons over a three-year period, 350 persons in year one, 400 in year two, and 400 in year three. Sherry Ann Julian is the Education Officer in the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations, and Sustainable Development. This program will provide basic skills training, basic technical and life skills training. This program will help you if you have problems with literacy and numeracy. This program will provide work ethics and soft skills needed for you to function in the world of work. This program will provide internships. This training will allow you to gain employment or to continue training. After you have completed the course, you will receive a CVQ certificate levels one and two. Training will be certificated at the Caribbean Vocational Qualification CVQ level and will see a total cohort being trained. More than 35% of trainees will be male, more than 35% of trainees will be female, and 12% of trainees will be young people with disabilities. CVQ courses will be offered in districts throughout the island. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. In more education-related news, a twinning program between schools in St. Lucia and the French departments offers new prospects in education, as well as social and cultural integration for the islands. More in this report. A delegation of 20 school officials from the French Isles has visited St. Lucia to officially sign a memorandum of understanding for the twinning of schools in St. Lucia and those of the French dependencies in the Eastern Caribbean. The objective of the twinning agreement is to formalize and improve the already existing exchanges between schools in St. Lucia and the French Isles. Joanna Sultan, Consul General for Martinique, Guadeloupe and French Guyana, noted that a point person has been chosen to liaise with the countries. There will now be this plan that will um, lead to the greater good for both, both, both islands. We're looking at cricket being introduced into the curriculum in Martinique. We're looking at students here being able to attend the universities in, in the islands instead of having to go all the way to France or to the States or to England. It's just a matter of learning the language. And of course, the French are very interested in learning English. Likewise, we are interested in learning French. Fiona Meyer, Chief Education Officer at the Ministry of Education, explained that the MOU will ensure continued collaboration in the future. So this has been formalized and it includes 20 schools, you know, primary schools across the island as a starting point whereby we pray, we hope, we desire to continue to work collaboratively with our French counterparts, in fact, our French sisters and brothers, to ensure that issues of linguistic exchanges, cultural appreciation for both of the nations happen when we look at instruction, effectiveness of those, best practice, and it includes likewise our Safalwis Community College. So we have gone not only from the primary all the way to the tertiary levels to ensure that language doesn't continue to be a barrier on both sides. The Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Honorable Alan Chastney, highlighted that due to close proximity, many opportunities will arise for both Martinique and St. Lucian students via the signing of the MOU. The ability for us to see activities after the signing are real. And the times that I'm hoping that our students from St. Lucia are going to be able to spend in Martinique with young people of their age and to learn the culture and understand um, the life of being in Martinique is invaluable. 
And I believe similarly that the young people of Martinique being able to come over here and enjoy the many festivities that we have here, the St. Lucia Jazz Festival, our carnival, we just finished Jeanne de Creole. Um, we have our Roots and Soul Festival, um, and we're hoping that some of these activities are going to be uh, the reason why some of the students are able to come over here. The Memorandum of Understanding was part of a three-day visit last week. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. As part of ensuring the smooth integration of the recently launched HEARTS initiatives in the primary health delivery services in St. Lucia, the Department of Health and Wellness, and the Pan American Health Organization, PAHU, recently hosted a capacity building workshop. More from Fennel Neptune. Healthcare workers around the island were granted the opportunity to participate in a workshop aimed at building the capacity on the implementation of the HOTS initiative. The participants were able to gain knowledge on the best practices for ensuring management of cardiovascular diseases at the primary healthcare facilities. Senior Medical Officer for Non-Communicable Diseases, Dr. Shana Sarah Filbert says, this initiative is extremely important and is hoped that it will assist with decreasing the mortality rate of cardiovascular diseases in St. Lucia. Hearts encompasses the, all the healthcare providers. Um, we're talking the doctors, nurses, the health educators, nutritionists, pharmacists. Everybody's on board with hearts. Everybody has a role in hearts. Everybody knows what it is that's expected and also hearts it's very patient oriented. So it's not about the doctor coming and telling the patient what to do, but it, there are discussions, there's, there's counseling. It's, it's a holistic way of managing a patient with high blood pressure to prevent strokes and heart attacks. Consultant for the WHO Global Hearts Initiative, Dr. Kenneth Cornell says, it is necessary that countries in the Caribbean region engage in health system interventions as to ensure better cardiovascular disease outcomes. Hearts uses uh, the system strengthening such that we can provide care at a lower cost that is evidence-based and with better results through very simple interventions. Take for instance, this isn't a new drug that's discovered or even a new way of doing things. It's getting healthcare providers to work together as a team. It's also using the, the most evidence-based drugs which actually are not the most expensive and it's having a structure. The training also focused on identifying strategic approaches and measures to protect St. Lucians from cardiovascular disease. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. And this is the NTN Nightly. Brian O'Brien is up next. Le climat la terre a changé. Et ça a affecté nous toutes. Cyclone qui a venu plus mauvais. Gros l'eau et l'air à prendre l'eau qui a détruit les animaux et les plants. Quand la mer a venu plus chaud et qui a tué place qui s'est pressé dans la gravité. La mer chaud a aussi changé de manière de pressé qui a quitté l'un côté et allé à l'autre côté. Cette liste a contribué à un petit zingas en espace. Quand un petit pays nous a essayé de faire tout ça nous ça fait pour assurer qu'il nous baisse à ce quantité de gaz nous a servi pour empêcher la terre de venir plus chaud. Et faut pour baisser à ce quantité de gaz nous a servi, c'est mitigation. Le climat a changé. Il a changé depuis que nous tout au niveau de la terre, cabouler gaz, l'huile et le chèbon. Et ça a un écho de la terre qui a changé plus chaud. Ça, nous ne pouvons faire tout le même, c'est pour adapter. Faites tout ça nous a fait pour préparer et répondre pour ces conséquences négatives à la cause du changement climat. Nous tous, ça fait quelque chose. Par exemple, nous ne pouvons assurer qui nous protecter tout ça nous a planté. C'est vie fumier qui est naturel. La tique qui nous pour abattre des manches en temps de cyclone et de l'eau. Construire un canal pour l'eau courir bien quand il faut. Et assurer qui le canal n'a pas les ordres. Faites tout ça qui est possible pour vivre en temps de changement climat. Trouvez plus d'informations à ce plan d'adaptation national gouvernement et des marches ou même ça prend pour protéger le corps et tout l'autre set les siens. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Thanks, Misha. Welcome once again to your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. 
Interschools Under-19 Basketball Competition continued Friday, November 1st, 2019, with the following outcomes. Sufre Comprehensive Secondary School won handsomely over Archipo Secondary 49-5, while Corin Secondary also dominated Ciceron Secondary 55-8. The Seventh-day Adventist Academy emerged victorious over Patricia James Secondary School 44-36 in a keenly contested encounter. Semi-final matches are set for Tuesday, November 5th. The first semi-final will see St. Mary's College taking on Sufre, whilst the Arthur Lewis Community College awaits the outcome of a game Monday between Shirzel Secondary and Leon Hiss Comprehensive to determine their opponents in the second semi-final. Finals and third-place playoff are set for Thursday, November 7th at the VG Multipurpose Sports Complex. Third place jump ball is at 1 p.m. and the final schedule for 2.30 p.m. Officials from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports have started the process ahead of the staging of the 40th Annual National Sports Awards Ceremony in February 2020. A number of national sporting associations sent representatives to an initial meeting called by the Ministry to outline plans for the staging of the awards. Association representatives present for that initial meeting on October 22, 2019 at the Ministry's conference room expressed the view that, in the main, the 39th Annual National Sports Awards was a success. The timing of the duration of the ceremony was highly commended, as it was in keeping with the two-and-a-half-hour period as was promised. The upcoming awards will be held on Saturday, February 15, 2020, at a venue to be confirmed shortly. Associations were advised that the deadline for submission of nomination forms is Friday, December 27, 2019. The awards document, which included a nomination form, was presented at the meeting. Forms will also be distributed via the ministry's email address youthdevelopment.sports at govt.lc. Receipt shall also be by this medium. During the meeting, national associations were reminded of their annual subvention for the 2019-2020 government fiscal year and that national associations will be required to be more accountable in order to receive the allocation. They were also reminded of stipulations for assistance by the St. Lucia National Lotteries Authority, the NLA. And as we come to the end of our update from Youth Development and Sports Day on the NTN Nightly News, I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The Department of Home Affairs and National Security will host the seventh session of the Franco St. Lucian Joint Security Committee on Tuesday, November 5, 2019. The Franco St. Lucia Security Commission came about on March 5, 2004, in order to organize cooperation between the two neighboring islands of St. Lucia and Martinique. The committee was formed to provide a link with the government of St. Lucia, the Embassy of France in Castries, and the prefecture of the region Martinique in Fort de France. The objectives include organizing and addressing shared issues relating to maritime security, extradition, human and drug trafficking, natural disasters, risk management, and the promotion of judicial cooperation. Among the subject matters to be discussed are safety at sea, immigration and border control, and judicial cooperation, among others. The meeting takes place at the Finance Administrative Center Conference Room, Point Seraphine, Cash Trees. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Parmas Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arcoyon. No one ever reads the fine print. But if you use a cell phone, landline, the internet or cable TV, read the terms of the service contract carefully and pay attention to the type of service, the length of the contract, contract renewal, penalties, fees for services, termination and reconnection, fee increases and how much notice is required, the option not to receive advertisements and sharing personal information with third parties. Do not sign a contract that you are not satisfied or comfortable with. This message is brought to you as a public service announcement by Ectel, the NTRC, and this station.
Welcome back. We joined Parmas Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. Monsieur Tanish, eh? Monsieur, Madame, Department of Responsibility for Information and Government Services, as a GIS, as a Television National Pia, NTN, Aposito Novella Queol, Visito, Primus Hutchinson. Mon ovam, c'est moi des affaires business, à celle-ci, et attention, c'est pour faire assurer que je ne trouvé bien à courir dans l'observation de ça. Ça se répugne, ministre de la responsabilité pour développement business en gouvernement de celle-ci, on est à Bradley Félix. Semaine passée, la tenue un grand assemblage en studio NTNGIS, côté plusieurs jeunesses, en se répugne l'ego grec à différentes agences, l'assemblée, pour te présenter commencement au programme pour moi de ce business. On va Félix déclarer que je vais mettre tout un changement ensemble pour encourager les jeunes qui engagent dans le business. Yo. Ça, c'est le business yo même pour entretenir un environnement qui a pris l'avantage du système là que le gouvernement a établi pour aider à faire pour gouer. Je vais vous dire que le Prime c'est pour exemple, le Nouni um, Taiwan Trade Show. Um, on a des gens qui ont fait Trade Show, ça, yo ha continuer avec business yo puis monter ouais qui ça yo ka produit avec moun ba yo un encouragement avec actuellement yo ni un petit um, business um, yo ka fait bon quand on tant jodi a um, c'est banque là t'es là tout avec ça et yo c'est c'est ba là ces jeunes moun là ka toujours um, plebe yo ka di yo pas à joindre l'argent pour yo aller à son différents um, level de like business yo ou tant manière mais dit ces banques là Yo ni pou mete ba en place pou fè asive yo sa bay se jen um, jan anti assistance pou yo um, fè business yo vini a son lot an lot level selon on est Bradley Felix de marche la mais de marche a fait côté invest Saint Louis ka travay sam jenès ki ni business et ka ofè se pou pou yo la ni yon lot initiatif minis la di côté yo ka pran les étudiants et placer yo dans un business ki ja ka fè pou gwe Et de bon temps, yo la, ba yo anticipe pour finance, pour yo wè, ek apon on yè pou ta menaje, ek opwe yo business effectivement. Alors, ta kay encourage yo pou etable business yo mèm, ek yo kay sa ni, sa ki sa yo mèm, ek pa kay ni pou travay, ve ka travay ba yon moun ako. Minis Felix osi twe konsane, si katite jenes, yo pa ka travay, an peye ya. Se pou sa, um, approach gouvernement sa, se, nous ni pour faire bay différents passer ça nous toujours qu'à faire puis si nous ni pour faire même bay là c'est plus monde qui pas qu'ai jeune travail so ni nous pour nous ni pour try faire Sainte ici en place plus business qu'ai veut entrer pour plus jeune gens jeune travail puis c'est pour ça nous qu'a try mettre um, za faire cruise terminal la vieille fort c'est pour ça nous qu'a try porter plus um, call center Sainte ici plus différents hôtels pour venir puis se kalte bay sa ki kay bay jeune moun travay gouvernement pa sa bay moun travay ankò gouvernement ni ni ni, ni top moun an, an, an sistèm lan OK ek se je, je private business lan yo pa sa pon pli pou pli moun ou ni pou respect pou yon moun mwen pou pote pou um, pote lòt moun an didan so se pou sa nou kon gouvernement recognize nou pa sa kòmanse kou kontinye fè bay la manye nou te ka fè avan nou ni pou gade pou pote pli diferan kalte business sant li si pou moun jwenn opportunity pour yo pour yo jeune travail sénateur Mauricio Thomas Francis embrassé dans pièce chicane initiative gouvernement pour un soulagement pour monde qui a trouvé barrel commission hot famille l'autre pays les membres sénateur c'est les membres sénat là assemblés ensemble semaine passée pour faire débat à façon qui remettait en cas concrète parce que les démarches du gouvernement japonais pour bailler soulagement à ce barrel commission Ou j'en paye, ou de famille ou à l'autre pays. Aussi, ma tuyau de publication ou éducation, côté les places business, car oui, senti, avec attic de manger, ad, boisson, joujou, avec l'autre attic, pour servir à caille, ça veut dire, pour être mangé, j'ai tué, taxe vat, à sous tout ces attics là. Sénateur Francis Kakweki, de marche là, ça a aidé à l'eau, les malheureux qui n'y brisent ces attics là, avec d'autres nécessités, pour caillou, avec la famille ou. Ta ka yon kon soulajman. Epi tou le lande yon ka espeye fami yo, epi jan yo vore ti barel la ba yo, 
pour yon manger plus mais les Noël qui a passé. So many pièces difficulty et puis et puis um, motion là nous nou ka di bête là moi même ni famille moi moi ni fait famille qui ka dépend à sous moi à sous l'autre famille nous pour trouver si pas parce yo ni maladie yo ni différent situation côté yo pas ça prend ka ko yo et puis famille nous même ka vrai barrel sorti l'autre pays pour aider ces monde ça là et moi ka wè là yo trouver ces barrel là moi yo ka content So tous les années à décembre yo ka espéré pour ti barrel la vini et tout ce ti barrel la vini pour yo amuser ko yo soin ko yo enjoy ko yo et puis moi content dat nou ka fè si mais sénateur Francis ka conseillé gouvernement pour considérer sérieusement pour faire arrangement ça là ferme là tous les années nou ka vini fè même bagay la ça c'est un bagay qui c'est tellement important moi ka wè il est il est pour nous faire ça permanent il est pour nous just dire c'est comme ça y est tous les années il ca comme ça et puis si nous vivre en ca c'est pour nous dire tout manière nous ca faire plus mais mais pas pour nous venir là tous les années ca dire est-ce pour faire parce que quand est-ce pour faire son bagage nous pas même si poser ca dire madame président l'hôpital saint jude a trouvé cadeau yo ambulance par complément les directeurs et ménagement l'hôpital alors Constitution officielle, ça là, qu'a placé l'hôpital Saint Jude à des positions qui doivent primer pour offrir service médical pour mon façade sud pays. Chairman pour l'hôpital Saint Jude, Wayne Harrow, qu'a quoi qui ambulance là qu'a joué un rôle qui est très important dans la vie cette lycée et dit que ambulance là ni tout ce qui est nécessaire pour opérer effectivement qu'a pour tuer service pour dans l'hôpital pour l'autre l'hôpital pour qu'a est clair nécessaire qu'a aussi offrir service si à Yon mouvi aksida kote plizye moun blesi. Ovisye ki wesko sa pou opwasyon l'hôpital Saint Jude, Dr. Sylvester Franswa, de ki y apwesi otan service ambulance la ki kay potiwe yon service ki top plime e pou li pep asout set le si. Y ajoute ki ambulance la ka agwandi asout service ambulance yo pou plizye nesesite an service l'hôpital la. Ka bay, ek ki kay osi ede ada yon hodegwe pou fe aswe ki pep pe ya wesewe bon kalite service et population ni l'habitude de trouver spécialiste en chambre pour situation secours docteur Patrick Joseph pour marquer qui il est prêt pour service ambulance là et effort les directeurs et management l'hôpital Saint Jude comme et qui continue pour aider sauver la vie monde et monsieur madame c'est comme ça nous autre bout nouvelle là mon cher monsieur autant que regarder à bonne invitation pour je ne puis encore si dire conserver la vie dans après cette autre nouvelle en créole à présent and that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.